Last night, Hill TV was invited to the White House to speak to the president on a broad range of topics. I was a part of that conversation along with our own John Solomon. The list included the confirmation hearings for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And also Jeff Sessions and what the president thinks is his crowning achievements. And joining us now to discuss all of these topics, the many headlines that came out of this interview is the Hill TV's executive vice president, John Solomon, who was also in the interview with the president. It was the two of you guys. Um, let's start with Sessions, yeah. because obviously the president has been critical of the attorney general in the past, but he took it to another level in this interview. I'm just going to read the quote. He said, I'm so sad over Jeff Sessions because he came to me. He was the first senator that endorsed me, and he wanted to be attorney general, and I didn't see it, but he came very strongly. He really wanted to be, and I let him be. And then he went through the nominating process, and he did very poorly. I mean, he was mixed up and confused, and it's very sad what happened. In the meantime, I don't have an attorney general. Wow. It does not get any more clear than that, John. When Buck asked the question, you could just see the president clobbed right on and he was ready. He was loaded. He knew um, what he wanted to say here. He did. He, uh, this is a shove in the back. Uh, Jeff, I'm not going to fire you, but get out because I don't trust you. You're, you're, you're AWOL. I mean, that's basically what he called the Attorney General of the United States. I think, AWOL. I mean, uh, uh, John, uh, our expectations were that he, he was going to be critical right. of Sessions because he has been in the past. But there's always been this consideration of Sessions as good on some policy issues, notably right. immigration. So maybe the president kind of beats him up on the Russia collusion and, and recusal right. side right. of the... Of the uh, but this wasn't that. This was no. actually uh, unhappy with his attorney general to yeah, say it. He went out of least. his way to say that it isn't just about the recusal. I, I don't, I'm not happy about what's going on the board. I'm not happy in a lot of other policy issues. I'm just not happy, and this is sad. I remember those quotes, and uh, you know, the, the attorney general has to have heard this loud and clear. It's a, it was a very uh, poignant moment in the interview, and a great question by Buck that started it. I and mean, I, it's remarkable that Sessions has stuck around this long, it is. given how critical the president has been. Yeah. But these comments really take it to, I mean, to say he doesn't even exist, I don't have an attorney general, is remarkable. And as you're pointing out, I mean, he said specifically he wasn't happy on the border. That's right. Which is the one thing we all felt like, oh, well, that he was, must be at least happy with yeah, him on that Sessions issue. A strong spot, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what everyone assumed, but not. not with the I, president. I think you got to assume Sessions is a man of, of, of integrity, uh, yeah. whether people agree with him politically or not. Uh, but I think he also probably has his limits when it comes to sure. trampling on his pride. And he has been serving this president to the best of his ability, I'm sure. This was a tough one. This is a tough one for him to, it's now out there. So. Yeah, I know. It was unambiguous. And, you know, you think about this uh, top law enforcement officer, Land, doesn't enjoy the confidence of the president. You know, if we get into a crisis, that's a, that's a relationship you don't want to be having on the rocks. And so uh, something's going to have to play out here. It'll be interesting to watch what happens. And another, another one of the, the moments, John, that I found most memorable is uh, when Trump was referring to uh, some of the breaking stories. And he gave you a, a bit of a, a attaboy, a high five on breaking some of these stories uh, yeah. because of the text messages, because of things that you've been writing about here at the Hill. Uh, and that has exposed the machinations behind the scenes of some folks at DOJ and FBI. He said, I hope to be able to put this up as one of my crowning achievements that I was able uh, to, through the help of a lot of good people, expose something that is truly a cancer mm. in our country. Cancer. Yeah. Strong words from the president about uh, chief law enforcement agency of the United States. Yeah, it was. I was struck by how versant he was in the text messages. He, he could quote exactly some of the seminal t text messages that we've all focused on in our reporting and uh, he remembered the good job page on the leak you know when yeah. on the, uh, when struck praises lisa about some leak in the media uh, uh there was another one where he talked about pretext he remembered they were trying to create a pretext just to start interviewing people it was clear to me he feels personally strongly that the fbi engaged in misconduct he had no problem looking at russia he said i got nothing to hide but he really felt like they had created a ruse. He called it a hoax. He escalated. He's been calling a witch hunt. Now it's, now it's a hoax. And, and I think these text messages, he said, the, the reason this case fell apart was not so much by documents, but by text messages. Remember that quote? Mm -hmm. yeah. but, and to, to say that his you know, war with the FBI, whatever you think of yeah. that, is he considers that a crowning achievement of his administration, he which up, he mentioned up there with tax, tax cuts. cuts. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Tax cuts, immigration reform. He said, this is going to be one of the biggest things I've achieved. 
Um, and, and, and when we were leaving, he said something just as we were closing up shop that if it can happen to me, it can happen to just about anyone in America. And that's what makes me concerned about this. That's why I want transparency. He used the word transparency at the end. That was his end goal. I thought that was interesting. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. I think that's what motivates him. And, and Crystal, there was, a, there, was an op- there was an opportunity to just, just push him on this one because I hadn't heard him actually say it before. Yeah. He said, is there a deep state? Do you believe that that's yeah. a term? Is oh, that yeah. a thing? The president said he does not like that like term, that term. Yeah. thinks that it's conspiratorial. So he, he rejects the, the usage, at least, of a term of the term deep state. But I, I, from what I understand, he likes the usage of the term cabal. Another, <laughs> so. Who doesn't? Right. Um, another interesting piece, though, and this is all, of course, in regard to the president's decision to declassify some documents right. related to the Russia investigation. And um, he revealed to you all that he has not actually reviewed yeah. those documents or those text messages that are going to be coming out. Why do you think that is? I think that'll be a surprise a, for a lot of people. It's a great question. He's clearly taking a leap of faith based on the members of Congress who have looked at it, who've encouraged it, that it would be good for the public to see these. Um, my guess is, and again, I'm reading between the lines, doing some reporting, that there's a concern that if he reads and he cherry picks some things and he doesn't uh, declassify other things, that'll be accused of trying to manipulate or obstruct the investigation. So in this case, he's just reacting to a lawful request from Congress. Congress said, please declassify these. He's doing it. That was my impression. I don't know, Buck, did you want? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and John, as we're sitting there, it's quite apparent that the president has taken this personally, meaning he's taken this investigation very personally. He doesn't think this is just politics as usual. This is a president who's dealt with with a lot. People said a lot of really nasty things about him, but he feels like this has been underhanded in a way that nobody else, as you said, should have to go through this, whether it's a politician or private citizen. Uh, so I, I think that with these text, uh, with the text messages, with all the stuff that might get released soon, because we're hearing there's going to be some pushback. That's the reporting today yeah. that some of these agencies might try to slow That's it down. Out there, yeah. This I'm president saying. is not going to back down off this declassification That's issue. Right. I don't yeah. think they're going to be able to play any games. Yeah. He, he made that very clear to us. No, yeah, but really, I mean, he's basically taking the word for Devin Nunes and other Republican yeah. members who've been really pushing on this. Um, yeah. Obviously, he also, you know, talked about the the big news of the day, Judge Kavanaugh the allegations against him by Christine Blasey Ford. And, um, you know, as you spoke with him, there's some question, as there continues to be, about whether Dr. Ford is ultimately going to testify. And he said it's a very big thing if she doesn't. So I have said right from the start, and people have been very happy with what I've said, that we have to let both sides speak. Um, You know, he has been sort of uncharacteristically... Uh, restrained, I would yeah. say, in his comments here. I mean, you know, normally the president, he's all pushed back, and that was kind of the initial statements we got from the White That's House, right. is that now more than ever, we're behind this guy. He's backed off of that and showing a little more restraint here. Yeah, it felt like he had a, a little scale in front of him. It was, hey, we got to weigh uh, Brett Kavanaugh's great record as a judge and his uh, intellect in the, in the classroom and all the things he's shown. But we ought to hear this woman's story and then make a decision after that. And, you know, Buck gave him a clear opening. Do you have any questions about her credibility? He said, I'm not going to go there. Let's let the process play out. Uh, I thought that was interesting. He then turned right away, though, because he wasn't going to miss all the opportunity. And he turned right away and said, those darn Democrats in the Senate, they play dirty tricks. Just And he compared Russia, you know, how they set me up on Russia, to how they dropped this at the last minute and tried to throw a wrench in the Kavanaugh hearings. I thought that was interesting. He could pivot to that, but he was unequivocal. This woman deserves her day, and let's hear it, and then we'll make a decision afterwards. He also was was clear on how much he respects Kavanaugh's record and background, right? He said that we have to take a look at his incredibly... Uh, incredible record, a record almost unlike none other that I've seen between the schools, the intellect. You know, I said yesterday, not a blemish on his record. You have to look at who she has to has to say. I mean, it, it's clear that he thinks that Kavanaugh is the gold standard for a possible Supreme Court nominee. He loves so those while Ivy League schools, uh, he, he, he likes <laughs> he does. O- o- the best that? schools, Crystal. Yeah. Only the best only schools. The best. Uh, so I thought that that was interesting as well. That I mean, he, yes, he, he thinks that the, that the uh, the accuser should have her day, but he yeah. also. Has it, he didn't show any wavering of confidence in that meeting whatsoever Not in that Kavanaugh is a great guy and a yeah. great pick, yeah. despite all the stuff that we're going through right I now. I agree. Yeah, no, he, was, he, he, uh, he rattled off all those uh, accreditations really quickly. Absolutely. Um, he also had some comments about his own uh, presidential fitness, which, <laughs> um, what test does he take? So he said, I took that test when I got my last physical. And the doctor said, that's one of the highest scores we've ever seen. I did that for not because I wanted to, but I did it. I was always good at testing. If there's anything great about me, it's stability. And I'm a good manager. I've always been a good manager, but you know I have a vision. Stable, good manager. I don't know that that's, those are the words everybody would use to describe this White House or this president. Well, certainly the words that the president chose. Uh, and, and I think that he's very Stable confident. Genius. Very confident in his abilities. And, and I think that once, 
You know, John, this president also understands the media and, and the media cycle as well as anybody. I, I think as a he blanket does. statement, he really knows. And when he, you know, things like stable genius, he leans into these phrases, he says them, and he knows that they're going to get on their own, they'll get buzz. And the they're fact wrong. that he doesn't right. back, the fact that he doesn't back down off of saying some things that at first people might say, hmm, just goes to show you that the president, one, does not suffer from a lack of confidence in what he's doing, his management, his ability, and two, he knows, he knows that that's going to get out there. And you know what, everyone's going to be talking about the president says he's a stable genius. Every time you listen to him talk, or every time, in this case, in an interview, uh, you, you feel like that he's writing some uh, sayings that are going to go on a T-shirt or a bumper sticker. He's able to take whatever he wants his defense to be and take it down to that common man's language, that common woman's language. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people ask uh, other people to defend themselves. He's just fine defending himself. And he's not afraid to say, I'm a genius, I'm stable, I'm a good manager, and I'm going to take credit for it because that's what people put me in here for. And yeah, how many I people have left candid. the White House again? How many people have, you know... Apparently you they weren't good managers Omarosa or stable or geniuses. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal, all, you know, it's it's like Highlander. There can only be one. Or it's, you know, the, yeah. when people go into a steel cage match, what two men enter, one man leaves. He I mean, there's been a process... He definitely sees himself as the one. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> but there's a process of, of whittling down until you get to the absolute best, I oh, think. Oh, it's like Royal Rumble um, kind yeah. of a it, 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 it is something like, <laughs> a, like a White House Royal Rumble. Uh, but, you know, John, we, we pushed him specifically on wh whether there'll be a wall. And, yeah. and he, he gave us an answer that I think he's, she stuck to, which is we've made some incremental right. improvements on the wall, but, you know, Congress is still a problem. But he did give us a preview on immigration. He Not did. with any specifics, but it, was, it certainly perked up, perked up our ears. He said, I'll be doing things over the next two weeks having to do with immigration, which I think you'll be very impressed at. Yeah. We couldn't get more out of him than that, but uh, so far it sounds yeah. like the yeah. president's got something up his sleeve. Maybe what do you think? Executive order. I think it sounds like executive action of some sort. I don't have any sense of reporting. I've been asking around. A lot of the aides I asked didn't know about it. Uh, one question would be, does Jeff Sessions even know about it? His immigration uh, uh, policy guy and, and a guy who he said he wasn't happy with his border uh, policy. So maybe he's going to trump uh, Sessions and do something that we don't all know about. Um, I also thought it was interesting. He, um, his uh, math on the wall is I, I moved as much money as I can. I need 10 more Republicans and I get through. He was a big uh, critic of the filibuster. He doesn't like the way the Senate does business. He doesn't like that 60 Well, of course, he doesn't rule. like having uh, any kind of a check on what the, he does. He, he wants, wants uh, it 51 all done. and done. And, and, um, but uh, he, he understood that. And I think he, he put into perspective, listen, I want to get it done. It's one of my signature promises. If Congress gets here, we'll do it. In the meantime, I'm going to keep moving what I can. And that's what I took away well, from Well, and, and of course, the timing, you know, two weeks from now, obviously, right election before time. the midterm yeah. elections, um, the, the right is not particularly excited, at least from what we've seen from election results. But you also asked him about, you know, is it going to be a red wave? What did he say yeah. there? He said, I, I feel like we're going to do really well, better than anyone expects. So he didn't say, he didn't stick to the red wave thing, but he, he backed it up. I think it's going to be uh, a good year. And, and he always said is, how could they fire a party that gave us this economy, right? We have a great economy going. People are getting jobs. They, uh, we got record uh, unemployment. And so his, um, his take is, in the last two weeks, I, I took away, in the last two weeks of election, he's going to double down on the economy, and he's probably going to do something close to what Reagan did. Are you better off than you were two years ago? If so, why change leadership now? I think that's where, you kind of feel like that's where the argument's going to go in the final couple of weeks of election. The Democrats are pretty motivated, as you know. John, yeah. there's only been a couple of times that I've been in the Oval before, but it was with the CIA. I never uh -huh. actually have been in before as a, as a journalist. Um, you've been in many times. This was the longest, the most memorable. What would you say of all the presidents you've interviewed? It was certainly one of the longest interviews I've ever had with a president or former president. 45 minutes? Yep. I also think uh, the, the sheer energy. I remember when we got done, we were kind of exhausted. It's actually an he's, exhausting experience because his energy. He's a tour de force. It's unbelievable yep. when you're in there with it. And he even said, uh, these guys are agitated. They want to get a question, but I'm not done yet. And there was a moment where he said, hey, I'm, I think I'm wearing these guys out. It's an exhausting experience because he takes you around a lot of different places quickly. And then he takes another question. He takes you around another, a lot of more questions. Um, I was struck by uh, a couple things. Uh, when I, I saw him a year, year and a half ago in a couple settings, I, I felt like he was still trying to grow into the job. Yesterday, he felt very comfortable in the Oval Office. It's the first time he sort of felt more comfortable in position. He didn't feel like a New Yorker plucked into the White House. He felt like he is in charge. And he made a point. Listen, it's, things are running okay here. It's okay. And um, he just seemed at ease with his decision and at ease with being in that chair. And, uh, you know, every president, I think uh, you read the memoirs, every president, those first two years are pretty tough. It's, yeah. a, it's an overwhelming job. It feels like he's 
feeling into what his rhythm is going to be as president. Well, you saw it. It's going to be very interesting to see if there's any fallout from his comments, particularly on sessions. I so think we'll, there will we'll be. We'll keep our eye on that. Yeah. Um, John, thank you so much. Thanks, Great guys. Work that was fun, John. Thank you. A lot of fun. Back.